I set up a meeting with a young woman who admits to having taken Cramorol back in 01 when she was taking her SAT. I think that if we look into her individual case, then we might be able to get a lead on our research that we have to do. Do you think this case study will narrow down the cause of why the SAT scores suddenly dropped? Well, it's the only lead we've got, so we might as well try it. So you're saying that in taking this pill, your performance initially skyrocketed, but then just plateaued and completely crumbled? Brennan, I'm going to need you to pull test records back at least 10 years. Call College Board if you have to. We've got to check into this lead. Okay. What have you got for me, Sean? According to my research, in 2001, the practice SAT test was given the first week of school, and they had a remarkable average of 1,800 for all. However, over the years, that average has decreased dramatically, going well below the national average. <laughs> well, I'm thinking they didn't do much studying in the summers. Is there any way we can get a group of these students together and maybe ask them about what could have happened? I already did. I tracked down as many of the students from 2001 that I could find, and of the 100 I did find, 65 of them reported using the drug. In 2006, the test was administered in the fourth week of school, and the average was down 11%. It was even worse in 2011. It was given on the seventh week. At that time, the average was down to nearly 900. Why does it seem like this drug is making the kids dumber? The users, their scores just plummet, while everyone who didn't use the drug stayed basically the same. What we need to do is get a group of 100 students together, separate them into random groups of 50. Let's see what we can find out about this. Great, let's go work on this, Sean. The researchers were able to locate and interview students who had been administered the SAT in the years 2001, 2006, and 2011. In order to determine whether or not the students had been on the study aid, each student was asked whether or not they had taken a drug the night before their exam. In 2001, the SAT was given the first week of school, in 2006, the fourth week, and finally in 2011, the seventh week. From 2001 to 2011, the scores for drug users dropped 900 points, while the scores of non-users stayed within a range of 1,200 to 1,300. The researchers were able to graph this data to view the trends of the scores for students both on or off the study aid. This graph displays the initial high scores received by most students on Cramorol the first week of practice tests. But as time went on and more tests were taken, the average score for drug users graphed in blue began to drop, eventually below the average scores of the non-users. The average scores of the non-users graphed in red show that not much fluctuation occurred from the typical mid-range scores normally received. From here, the researchers decided to test for themselves the effects of Cramorol under the hypothesis created in this quasi-experiment. Their hypothesis was that if students were 
On Cramerol, they would initially receive high scores, but then the drug's effects on intelligence would take effect, causing a drop in scores as seen in the past 10 years. All right. I administered 500 milligrams of Cramerol to one of the groups and 500 of the placebo toward the other. All right. Go ahead and administer this week's test. What are we trying to prove? Each week for seven weeks, we are going to administer the same drug taken by the students in 01, 06, and 11, and proctor a test to see what the average scores come out to be. I want to try and recreate the trend like the one of the average score for the users and the non-users over the last 10 years. Do you really think that this drug makes the students dumber? Ask me seven weeks from now. McGinnis, we did indeed determine that students in group one received lower scores and students in group two received relatively the same scores over the seven weeks. Now, which group received the drug? I assure you, group one was given the drug. <laughs> and just as we suspected, the scores dropped off over time. Well, talk about irony. They thought they were making themselves smarter by taking the study aid, but in actuality, they ended up receiving lower scores. In all honesty, I hope the media makes a huge field day out of this. If we can get kids all across America thinking drugs actually make them stupider, we won't have a problem. <laughs> we can only hope. To prove their hypothesis, the researchers randomly selected 100 test subjects and randomly assigned 50 subjects to one group and 50 to the other. Group 1 was given 500 milligrams of the drug Cramerol, while Group 2 was given a placebo sugar pill with no effect at all on their intelligence. To control other variables affecting the results, the experiment was performed double blind. The participants and the researchers were not aware which pill either group had. Each week, the pill was administered to the subjects, and an SAT test was proctored of different form each week for seven weeks. The results for each group were as follows. This graph displays the interaction between the average scores received by the Cramerol users and the non-users. Just like the data collected from 2001 to 2011, the scores of the drug users were below average the first week, then peaked to above average the second week, and from there steadily dropped off. In contrast, as expected, the scores of the non-users remained fairly constant across the entire test period. The trend suggests at some point the scores of the users will go below those of the non-users, and also supports the researchers' hypothesis for a link between the drug Cramerol and students' decreasing SAT scores.